Hello, welcome to Mondays with Mira and I'm really excited to be sharing this really delightful indie published book, Magnificent, The Polka Dot Pyrenees. And it's written and published by one of my former students, Diane Birch, and her partner, Michael Frederick, and illustrated by Gerald Kelly. And beautifully illustrated, by the way. There are many things that I really like about this book, and one of the things is just its fantastic production values, which unfortunately you don't see in a lot of indie published or self-published books, but it's certainly, um, it's certainly the case here. So let's get started and find out just who is Magnificent, the polka dot Pyrenees. So we start with these fabulous end sheets here, binding the book together, because it's a hardbound book, and hardbound books have end sheets. And it shows all the characters in the book who have delightful names like Cool Cat Sam, Libby, Miss Boo, Max, Murray, and Bo. And here's a lovely little twist. The back end sheets have the real animals. And it's got these great descriptions of them. Really, really cool idea. I really like the illustrations and I like the writing too. And one of the things I like about the writing is that thing called voice. And I know sometimes it's hard to pin down what is voice, but listen to this. Long ago in a faraway land, high in the mountains between fancy France and sunny Spain, lived beautiful, long-haired white dogs which roamed the hillsides, protecting their flocks of... Hey, whoa there. I thought this story was about me. I'm Max and I don't know anything about mountains in France. I live on a mountain in America with three other dogs just like me. A grumpy old dog, Murray, and some uh, cats. So when we look at this, you can see in terms of voice, we start off with that very traditional long sentences, long ago in a faraway land, high in the mountains. And then we get interrupted and it's called breaking the fourth wall where the main character or characters interrupt the story and introduce themselves. So, and it's the fourth wall is like in a theater production. And someone says, he didn't really mean that, or something like that, where they're talking directly to the audience. Now you can see here on the left, it's this very dignified dog that goes goes with the you know the traditional long away and far away land, and then here we've got Max, who is who's really goofy and super adorable. Another thing I want to point out is that the authors have really optimized their use of back matter with these max facts. And so they have all these really interesting facts in the back, which provide counting opportunities. There are other counting opportunities in the book that I'll share with you in a little bit. But we start off in a really saucy way. And then we meet Lady Mom, his owner. And it turns out that poor old Max has allergies. And a lot of have kids have allergies, so this is a really nice connection with kids' own experiences. It says, it says what, what I do know is the summers are hot. The first summer that I was all grown up, I learned about fleas. Not that I have fleas, mind you. My lady mom, the lady who tells me she's my mom, always keeps us treated for fleas. Only I learned that I have allergies. Oh wow, I think this is about to get complicated. So that's a very distinctive voice. It's a very childlike voice and one that's easy for kids to identify with. And then it goes into how he scratches and then he begins biting himself and chewing because he's just itching and pulling his hair out. And so his lady mom takes him to the vet and look at how absolutely charming these illustrations are. His lady mom takes him to the vet 
and the vet has to shave him to put the medicine on. But what happens to poor old Max is when he gets shaved, he discovers he has all these spots underneath. There I was walking out the door free at last and ready for home when I passed the glass doors. I see my lady mum walking with me. Then I see my dashing face and, wait, that dog has short hair. All right, they cut, my, cut mine. No, wait a minute. What? And he sees his spots. He's trying to rub them off. The spots are off. And then he resorts to covering up. And on the way, Max has been fantasizing of all the different ways that he can hide his spots. She can't get him out until she finally cottons on to what's going on. And she helps Max by tying the blanket on him. And of course, when he gets back, the other animals tease him. And poor Max is just totally humiliated until the wonderful Miss Boo who's blind, talks to them all and says, children, remember, Max did not feel well and he had to see the doctor. Sometimes we Pyrenees must have our hair cut, sometimes even to the skin, to solve a problem. That is when we discover our hidden beauty. We all have spots. Now, usually they're large and only a few. It sounds like Max has extra marks. Polka dots, as you say. That just makes him unique, his own special design just as each of you have your own secret patterns hidden underneath. And so you can guess what's coming now. They all want to find their secret patterns and it gives them their com a commonality, which is really wonderful. So Libby, Bo, Miss Boo and I spent the afternoon playing and comparing our once hidden spots. We compared the shapes, the colors and the sizes, curriculum connections, and we realized no one had the same. They were all a little different. And then they get into counting the spots, and that's where the counting comes in. And it's just really sweet. And this, uh, I'm not going to give the ending away, but it ends with the word magnificent. But I'm not going to tell you how that comes to be. Mm. And there's some wonderfully profound stuff in here. And then instead of having an author's note at the end, there's a dear reader note, which is much nicer. And here's the real Max, who's pretty darn adorable. You just want to pet him and hug him. Oh, it's really sweet. Max is a great Pyrenees with badger face markings. He was about a year old when he was found seeking shelter under a neighbor's carport. We could find no one who had been looking for him and have no idea what his history may have been. We do know one thing with certainty. We are blessed to have him in our family. He is funny, smart, and really is magnificent, complete with hidden polka dots. Really, really lovely. And then we've got the Max facts that was scattered throughout the book. Then we have information about to have or have not a Pyrenees. They're good and they're not so good qualities. We have more Max Facts, tips to help you find your forever friend, to help children be responsible pet owners and be responsible in the kind of animal that they select. And then it's got a list of future fun stories. So it's really delightful, beautifully done. I love the illustrations, their watercolor. Maybe their computer, but I really, really doubt it. Um, they're just very beautifully done and it's a really lovely lovely book so anyway that's it for Mondays with Mira and Magnificent the polka dot Pyrenees I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did bye